I don't know. I, I just pretended I was like 17 again and didn't care. Um, I've, it's hard to think back to all those. I mean, in 28 years, I don't even feel like I'm 28 years old yet, but, um, it's a lot of them. And I remember my first one. I remember one year that it was sponsored by Crown Royal and I could actually taste Crown Royal in my throat, but that might've been from the night before. So, um, it's, I, I don't even, you can't put it into words. You, when you, I think any of these guys, anybody here says that I'm going to go win six Kings Royals. You're like buying yourself. It's just, you want to win one. And then once you win one, it's like you want to win another one and you want to win. It's just part of how the mentality of wanting to race with the world of outlaws is. You know, you, one isn't enough. Um, today isn't enough. It's always about tomorrow. It's always about wanting more. Um, I want to go hurry up and get to Wednesday, see if I can be as good as I was tonight. I mean, that's just the racer mentality. So um, as much as you enjoy it and that, you have to kind of put it behind you and and focus on the next thing. And I think that's what makes David what he is and Brent what he is and me what I am. We just, it, it's that mentality. You enjoy it today and enjoy it, but don't get too caught up in it. You know what I mean? Um, try to continue on and just keep being competitive. And I'm getting no younger. So I get asked way more often now, how long are you going to do this? How long are you going to do this? Yesterday I told someone tomorrow's my last day. Um, but today's not my last day. <laughs> that was yesterday. That's what I'm saying. I think it was you. No, it wasn't you. Okay. I know better. Yeah. Anyway, it's, I guess, as long as it's fun and you can be competitive, you, you, you keep aspiring to try to be at that level. And um, I'm getting my ass handed to me by a bunch of younger guys. David, um, Carson, Brad's not so much younger, but a little bit. Yeah, he's like 37. Yeah, he, he, I, I was, uh, what did he say? I told TK he was 300, so I guess that makes me 280. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie, while everyone is special, is there any added emphasis on how important these ones are at this track, given that the guy that owns the place on the upper sleeve of your driver's suit? <laughs> well, no. Um, I, I think people have these perceptions because your car owner owns the track and he owns your team. Um, and I know this guy can sit here and tell you it's the same thing. Um, first thing I thought when I when I heard him uh, say that we were doing a fuel stop is I was like, oh my, I bet this is just for us because we're starting on the pole. <laughs> Someone's going to say that. You know, they have these preconceived notions of it's rigged, fixed, it's rigged. So I would have rather ran 40 laps with no fuel stop myself. But I think Mike made the right call because we were going damn near track record speeds all night long. And I don't know. I, I honestly don't know how much fuel any of us had at the break. Yeah. We made it. I didn't. I don't ask. think we would have. I wasn't I even concerned. I didn't ask. Yeah. But. So it's like, um, and then we go no single and no double file restarts. And I was like, man, we just keep changing things. But I guess in the matter of safety, Mike Mike makes those calls, and I think he does ninety nine point nine percent of the time. He makes them right. And, um, there's always someone that's going to agree with it, and there's always someone that's going to disagree with it, but. Um, you know, to, to be able to win at Tony's house is, is pretty special. Um, we got to spend a little time with him early tonight and uh, watch the, the drag team in Denver spin the tires a few times and uh, look at how they adjust things and just look at a different type of racing from a different perspective. And so it's good for us to, to have a decent run tonight with him here and 